What's going on guys, Boss OP6 here, Vection Nerd Video, and today I'm here to do every WWE Backlash pay-per-view ranked. Now, why am I doing this? Well, so for the simple fact that WrestleMania Backlash is going to be happening in, a, in about a week or two, I figured why not rank all of the Backlash pay-per-views. This took, this was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Not in terms of, you know, pr preparing for this. Just for the fact there was going to be 17 pay-per-views of this thing. I understand that whenever you don't win at Mania, you want to get your revenge. Just call it Backlash. Why here, Why? Why not just say WrestleMania Vengeance, pal? I don't get it. And frankly, neither should you. But anyways, 16 pay-per-views, 17. It's going to be happening in a week or two. But yeah, let's just scroll on over and talk about the worst one in my opinion. Number 16, WrestleMania, or not WrestleMania. Ah, I, I they have a WrestleMania backlash on my head. It's causing me to go insane because they keep forcing it down your throat. Anyways, number 16, Backlash 2018. Wow, that's all I gotta say about this pay-per-view. This was bad. This was not a good pay-per-view. Okay, coming after Mania 34, which was very, very 50-50 in my opinion. With some good matches. I thought the triple threat for the IC title was fun. And, yeah, there were some good matches here and there. Here's the problem, though. This was a bit too... Not good. Like, okay... When your opening match is the best match on your show, you know you have problems. Seth Rollins versus The Miz for the IC title. 20 minutes of pure wrestling bliss. Great chemistry, great storytelling, great stuff. And then you get Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss for Raw Women's title. And that show went downhill from there. Doesn't help that Hardy versus Orton, which sounded like a good idea on paper, wasn't really that good. Brian versus Cass was not a good uh, good match. Carmella versus Flair was absolutely terrible. Styles and Nakamura in a noted Q match for the WWE title sounded like a good idea. And the match itself was actually pretty fine for the most part. And then the ending where they both kicked each other in the nads and they both got counted out. Now this was what ultimately resort. In a very, very, very underrated last man standing match on Money in the Bank a month prior. But having three stinker pay-per-view matches. Because they also had the match at the Greatest Royal Rumble. And we don't talk about the Saudi Arabia shows. But my god, that, that was not a good. And then we have the most filler match you can possibly think of. Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Why did that go eight minutes? Genuine question, like... I'm surprised Lashley managed to get out of the situation he did. Well, granted, it took him a little bit, but... Oh, Lord. And then Reigns versus Samoa Joe has to be one of the worst main events of all time. Bar none, because no one cared about this match. Literally, no one cared about this match. And it's it sucks because Reigns and Joe actually could have some good chemistry, but ultimately... No, it did not work. So then we get to number, uh, number 15 with the year prior, Backlash 2017. This is the show that they made Jinder Mahal WWE Champion. Literally, that's all I have to say, and you can automatically tell, yeah, they had no idea what they were doing. They made Jinder Mahal, who was jobbing out to the people, like to the likes of Roman Reigns, Finn Balor, and freaking Seth Rollins. He wins a six-pack number one contenders match. You try to make him seem legitimate, and yet he won. How, what? That's like saying you're making one, two, three kid, aka X Pac. He beats Razor Ramon after getting the hell beat out of him, and then next week he's challenging for the WWE title. They did not know how to make good champions. Now, I understand why they did it. They did it because of the nationality, even though gender is actually Canadian. But you sacrificed the WWE title. Your most prestigious title in your lengthy company history. <sighs> Lord in heaven. 
With that being said, there's a couple bright spots, like the uh, opening match between Nakamura and Ziggler was pretty fun. I did like the tag title match between the Usos and the Brazongo. The I, U.S. title match was good, but the ending was so stupid. But then you have filler matches like Zayn versus Corbin, the wrestling or the welcoming community, uh, community against Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Naomi, which was not needed. And Harper versus Rowan seemed like a grunge, a grudge match with no animosity whatsoever. But yeah, not not really, not really a great pay per view. But there's been some worse ones. Number four, this one kind of pains me to put so low on the list, but I have my reasons for it. Number 14, Backlash 05. Now, coming off of Mania 21, which is, was a big success, even though it wasn't perfect, there were some good ma there were some really good matches there. However, this show was kind of there for the most part. Like, you have a random tag team turmoil match between uh, that Hurricane and Rosie won. Kane versus Viscera was just a thrown together match. And Hogan and Shawn Michaels against Muhammad Hassan and Dabari was not really a great match. And the second match between Triple H and Batista and their trilogy was a bit better than Mania 21, but was not the greatest. They had a way better Hell in a Cell match at Vengeance. A month prior or a month later but yeah this one was kind of there but that being said there were some pretty two there were some damn good matches like Shelton Benjamin versus Chris Jericho for the IC title that was an absolutely awesome match and Chris Benoit against Edge in the last man stand match but good lord that oh my god the shots the headshots why and it's kind of haunted talking about Benoit considering what he would do two years later with that being said, you cannot deny the dedication he did to taking those headshots. What the hell were you thinking, Chris? But yeah, overall, the show was just kind of odd for the most part. But there was some highlights, and I'm not going to dispute that. Number three, Backlash 2020. Their second show during the pandemic... Which, they were trying to experiment with crowd noises and with, um, like, the enhancement talent just being, uh, being the crowd. Okay, not the, the worst thing in the world, but hey, at least they're trying something different. This show kind of had missed potential, in my opinion, but there were some pretty damn good matches. Um, I did like the uh, triple threat for the Raw Women's Tag Titles. McIntyre versus Lashley. That was a barn burner of a match. But then you have the matches like Strowman versus Miz and Morrison for the Universal Title, which was not good. Jax versus Asuka ended in a double countout, which no one wanted to see. And Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus nearly went 17 minutes. That could have been easily on a SmackDown. And Edge and Orton, while a good match, it did suck that A, it was dubbed the greatest wrestling match ever. And two, it sucked that Edge did um sucked that Edge did get uh, injured during the match. But that being said, the match itself was fine, even though it went way too long. But hey, it was better than their Mania match, I will say. But yeah, overall. Backlash 2020, it was okay um, for the most part. But yeah, not nothing really particularly memorable from the show, but it was okay for the most part. And then we get to Backlash 2002. Yes, number 12 on my list. Um, the reason why I'm going back and forth and why I'm looking down at my computer is because, well, I wanted to re read the, uh, what what I thought were the standout matches and all that stuff because I can't remember really off the top of my head. So I'm sorry if I'm cheating, but hey, it's better than nothing. Overall, this show, looking back on it, there were some good and also some bad parts to this match. Like, okay, Austin versus Taker was fine but it got very messy towards the end and it didn't help and nearly went for 30 minutes 
And also the main event between Hogan and Triple H was which really wasn't that good of a match. Because Hogan was freaking gas and so was Triple H. Then it went 20 minutes, 22 minutes. So it it was just pretty bad timing overall. And like Billy and Chuck versus Maven and Al Snow for the tag titles was just filler. Um, Jazz and Trish was okay, but it only went about five minutes because that's what the women were dealing with. And Scott Hall and Bradshaw was just a their match. Well, that being said, there were some good matches. This one's um, more memorable for Angle versus Edge and what would be an awesome uh, slew of matches they would have. Lesnar making his debut, just beating the hell out of Jeff Hardy. And Tajiri versus Kama was actually a fine opener, even though heel Tajiri was kind of weird around this time. But overall, not a terrible pay-per-view. It's certainly not the worst, but just kind of a placeholder there. And then we get to number 11, which would be the year after, Backlash 03. This will be Goldberg's first ever WWE pay-per-view match. And while not bad, he certainly had way better matches and he certainly had way worse ones, but... Overall, the card was a bit strong, but also kind of weak. Like, you had matches like Sean O'Hare versus Rikishi. Uh, Big Show versus Mysterio literally went like f three minutes. And Goldberg versus The Rock was good, but ultimately it was, it was just there for Goldberg to shine. And I will admit the six-man tag had some good moments, but it went on for too long. But with that being said, you had some good matches. You had the opening match between Team Angle against Los Guerreros, which was a hell of a match. Uh, Kane and RVD versus the Dudleys I thought was actually kind of fun. Um, you also had Jazz versus Trish, which was longer than their previous years, but it was still about six minutes. And I did like uh, uh, Brock Lesnar versus John Cena, yes. Lesnar actually took on Cena way before than their actual matches that they had in the uh, 2010s. And that was a hell of a match for WWE title too. And it was also funny kind of seeing heel Cena against the face Lesnar. But yeah, overall, not a terrible pay-per-view, but it was okay for the most part. It was better than its predecessor, but that's not saying much. Number 10. Now, from here on out, this is when the shows are actually starting to get pretty good, in my opinion. We have some good good turkey here, boys. Number uh, number 10, Backlash 08. Now, following Mania, uh, Mania 24, which was a hell of a pay-per-view, this one had some high and some low expectations. In terms of the highs, you had the rematch between Edge and Taker, and you had the Fatal 4-Way for the W title between uh, JBL, John Cena, Randy Orton, Triple H. On the other hand, you had matches like the Great Khali versus the Big Show and the 12 Diva Tag match, which really wasn't all that good. But with that being said, the matches here were actually pretty good. MVP versus Matt Hardy was a pretty fun match, and it was a good what good way for storytelling that Matt eventually got his revenge on MVP when they were originally tag partners in 07. So that was some good storytelling. Kane versus Chavo wasn't the greatest, but I actually thought it was a pretty fun match and it was way better than a 24 match that lasted eight seconds. Sean versus Batista was a good match and I did like the chemistry, even though that there were times they were off a little bit. And Taker versus Edge was a really good match and I did like the finish. Um, I will admit, though, the main event did go on a bit too long, in my opinion. But they kind of set up the moving pieces for Judgment Day the month later. But overall, this was a fun mat, a fun pay-per-view, but they were way better. So then we get to 9, which is the first ever Backlash pay-per-view, 1999. Following the botchness that was Mania 15... They had to re reinvigorate themselves, and oh boy, did they ever. This was a hell of an introduction to the pay-per-view. But it, it, that's not saying it doesn't have its stinkers, like Godfather versus Goldust, which really didn't amount to anything. New Age Outlaws versus, Art, uh, versus Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett wasn't really that great of a match. 
And can Shamrock and Taker, while a good match, it did go on for a bit too It went on a bit too long. It was actually the second longest match on the entire show. Well, that being said, this was a hell of a pay-per-view, and this was way better than its predecessor. The opening six-man tag between the Ministry of Darkness versus the Brood, which in my opinion should have been on the Mania card, so that way we didn't have to endure the utter garbage that was Taker versus Boss Man in the Hell in a Cell match. I did like the hardcore match between Al Snow and Hardcore Holly. Um, Mankind vs. Big Show, and I think the, th the second ever Boiler Room Brawl, it was very fun, and I'm surprised it was actually a bit short. Triple H and Xbox was a hell of a match, even though it nearly went 20 minutes. Should have been at least 15, in my opinion. And The Rock vs. Austin, this was this sh was way better than their Mania match. The Mania match was good, but it was, it was obviously the weakest of their trilogy. But this was a fun brawl, just no nonsense, and the ending where um, Stephanie got taken by The Undertaker. Where to, Stephanie? Awesome, awesome moment. But, yeah, this was a pretty damn good pay-per-view. I would have ranked it a little bit higher if the matches I liked more would have been a little bit better. But, yeah, this is some good stuff. Next up, we have number eight, Backlash 2016. This was the first one in seven years. And, overall... This was a pretty, pretty solid pay-per-view for the most part. Yeah, you had your stinkers. But overall, this was a fun pay-per-view. Um, yes, the whole Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton shtick wasn't really that good. And Kane versus Wyatt was fine. But again, their chemistry didn't really congeal. Um, and Usos versus the Hype Bros wasn't really my cup of tea, but... With well, that being said, this was a very fun pay-per-view. Heat Slater, Rhino, fi um, Slater finally getting a feel-good moment after all these years. Ambrose versus Styles was a hell of a um, main event for the WWE title. Becky, the, the six-woman uh, six elimination six-pack challenge for the uh, SmackDown Women's title was a very fun match. And Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz was a fantastic match. They have a much better match at no mercy, but this was a very good match. Overall, solid pay-per-view. Again, we're getting to the ones where it was almost kind of hard to rank at some points, but yeah, good stuff. Number seven, Backlash 01. Now, how do you follow one of the best and arguably the best WrestleMania uh, pay-per-view of all time? You have a pretty good uh, predecessor. This is when Triple H and Austin became the two-man power trip and they became power hungry. And overall, the ending product, this almost was in my top five. But I feel like the matches I ranked a little bit higher were a little bit better. Um, the opening match between X-Factor and the Dudleys wasn't really the best match, but hey, it at least got a feel good pop when uh, they uh, put uh, the I think all the X Factor through the table. Rhino versus Raven is arguably the best match of both men's WWE careers. Um, Regal versus Jericho was a very fun match, even though the I liked the rule structure and I thought it was actually kind of funny. Um, and Regal's com uh, comedy was absolutely golden. Benoit versus Angle, hell of a, a submission match. Arguably the best submission match in, in WWE history. Well, no, Bret Hart and Austin is still a thing, but still a good match. Shane versus The Big Show was a, a very underrated last man standing match, in my opinion. The triple threat between Matt Hardy, Christian, and Eddie Guerrero, while a good match on paper, it was a bit short. And the... The main event was good, but it went on for almost 20, it went for 25 minutes. A bit too bloated, and the, the ending got way too messy with the McMahons and the referee getting knocked down. I understand you want to have the heels win, but they kind of made it too messy towards the end. But overall, this was a hell of a pay-per-view, and honestly, one of the better Mania, uh, one of the better uh, Mania uh, follow-ups. Then we get to number six, Backlash 09. 
Now, f coming off of Mania 25, which was really not a good pay-per-view, they had to basically reinvigorate and recollect themselves. This was a hell of a pay-per-view to follow up. Now, is there some sinkers? Yeah, just Christian versus Jack Swagger wasn't really a great match, and Santino Morello defeated Beth Phoenix for reasons. But overall, the sh this show was very, very, very strong. CM Punk versus Kane, even though it was kind of an odd match, I thought it was actually kind of fun. Matt and Jeff Hardy battling out an I Quit match, which was way better than their Mania match. Yeah, the six-man tag for the WWE title was kind of weird because of Triple H or any of... If, if Triple H, Shane McMahon, or Batista got disqualified, counted out, pin or submitted, Orton would win the title. That was kind of convoluted, even though I thought the match was kind of fun. Edge and Cena was a hell of a last man standing match and an iconic moment where Big Show chokeslammed Cena through the spotlight. But Chris Jericho versus Ricky Steamboat, yes please, I love that match. And proved that Steamboat can still go. That was an awesome, awesome, awesome match. But a, a couple clunkers here and there. This was still this was way better than Mania uh, twenty five, in my opinion. Number 5, Backlash 06. Now, you're coming off of Mania 22, which was pretty good for the most part, even though that I thought there were some matches that were worse than others thought was. This was a proper sequel to Mania 32. Again, some clunkers. Carlito versus Chris Masters, which went 10 minutes for some reason, which really wasn't that great. And Big Show and Kane went to a no contest, which was kind of stupid in my opinion. But overall, this was a very strong pay-per-view. Umaga dis destroying Ric Flair in his debut match. Mickey James versus Trish it went way too short. But in the end, Trish got hurt throughout the match, was hurt in this match, and it kind of sucked at the end of the DQ. Uh, the IC title match between Shelton Benjamin and RVD was a hell of a match. I will, I'm going to get some flack for this, but I actually kind of like the McMahons versus Shawn Michaels and God. But I actually thought it was a fun match. I thought it was dumb. And I like how JR says, oh, this is bullshit at the end of the match. I thought that was funny. And I thought the triple threat between Cena, Edge, and Triple H was a lot better than Cena and Triple H, in my opinion. Because, hey, at least Edge got to main event a pay-per-view. Should have happened at Mania events. You had the golden ticket right there, but no. Overall, this was a very good match, a very good show, very fun, very enjoyable throughout the entire night. Number four, Backlash 2021. Only reason why it's not a little bit higher is because of that damn lumberjack match. If Miz and Priest was just a proper lumberjack match. Okay, it wouldn't have been great, but hey, it would have been way better than the zombie lumberjack match that we got just to promote Army of the Dead, which was a terrible movie, by the way. Dave Batista, I feel so bad for him. With that being said, this pay-per-view kicked ass. Honestly, every match was awesome throughout this entire show. Yeah, the... Tag match between the Mysterios and Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode wasn't really the best, but hey, it was it was a, a feel good moment at least. Um, Bianca and Bailey was a hell of a match, even though I did like Bianca versus Banks a little bit better. Uh, Strowman, uh, Strowman, McIntyre, and Lashley basically almost killed themselves. Which I thought was an absolute awesome match. I love the triple threat women's match between Asuka, Flair, and Rhea. Even though Flair shouldn't have been in the match. And Reigns versus Cesaro is one of the best matches Cesaro ever had. And proof that Cesaro can main event at pay-per-view, Vince. I'm glad he didn't resign his contract and now he's going to be Claudio Castagnoli again. But aside from a couple duds... This was an awesome pay-per-view. Awesome, awesome, awesome pay-per-view. It just sucked that the Zombie Lumberjack match existed. Number three, Backlash 04. How do you follow up Mania 20? I'm, I, I know I've repeated myself. How do you follow up this? How do you follow up that? Simple. 
You make a pay-per-view that's arguably better than the pay-per-view before. Well, at least on the Raw side. Again, matches that weren't really good, like Coachman versus Tajiri. And, uh, I guess you could say the tag match between Rosie and, uh, Hurricane against La Resistance. But, overall, this was a very strong pay-per-view. Benjamin versus Flair, yeah, it was kind of just there, but I actually thought it was fun. Jericho versus Christian and Trish. Jericho finally got his comeuppance against Christian and Trish. Victoria and Lita, even though, yeah, it was a match that felt like filler. I thought it was actually a fine match. Uh, Edge and Kane was kind of there, but I understand the story that we're trying to tell, even though the match itself wasn't really that memorable. The triple threat between um, Sean, Benoit, and Triple H... I kind of prefer their Mania match because it was a field goal over for Benoit. With that being said, this match was still pretty damn good. But this pay-per-view is memorable for Randy Orton versus Cat Shack in a No Holds Barred match. Or a hardcore match for the IC title. This made Orton. Yes, the match with Sean he had was pretty damn good. And kind of, it made more, it solidified his legend killer gimmick. This match made Orton a star. Fight me. I will argue with you to the day I die, but this match made Orton. This was a hell of a match. The RKO missed into the thumbtacks. The barbed wire. Orton throwing off the stage. Orton RKOing fully. And then a kick out. And RKO RKOing fully onto a barbed wire baseball bat. The barbed wire, the sh chair shots, it's just brutal. And I love every minute of this match. It's one of my favorite work matches. It's one of my favorite Foley matches. Fantastic match. Fantastic, fantastic show. Number two, Backlash 07. Except for maybe uh, Vince winning the uh, ECW title. And maybe... um. Probably Molina versus Mickey James. This is a fantastic pay-per-view. Fantastic. Literally, almost every match is absolutely flawless. Hardys versus Lance K and Trevor Murdoch is kind of underrated in my opinion. Benoit versus uh, MVP was a hell of a U.S. title match. It's almost as better as their um, match at Mania. Um, and the Fatal 4 between Orton, Edge, Michaels, and Cena was a very good match. I did really, 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 really enjoy the last man saying match between uh, uh, Taker versus Batista. If it did not end in a draw, then okay, it would have been a lot better. But I still thought the match was pretty damn awesome. This was an awesome show. That's not my favorite. Number one. Could have probably guessed it. It's Backlash 2000. Is there any doubt that this is one of the best pay-per-views that WWE has done? Especially during 2000. They were on a tear in the 2000s. They literally could have done none wrong. Even though Mania wasn't really a good Mania. But literally, this is one of the best pay-per-view follow-ups ever. Was there a couple man matches? Sure, Test and Albert against the Dudley Boys wasn't really a good match, but it did have a really good payoff of Trish getting put through a table. Um, both McKinnon and the Big Boss Man versus the APA was just a their match. And I will say, as much as I liked S.A. Rios and Guerrero for the European title, it felt just kind of there. But you have some fun moments, like Edge and Crusher versus D DX I thought was a fun match. Malenko versus Scotty Tuhati is underrated as hell for a light heavyweight title. That's probably the best match Scotty Tuhati has. And that is proof that Dean Malenko is one of the most underrated talents of all time. Crash Holly against Matt and Jeff Hardy. Perry Saturn has a hardcore Harley was a very fun hardcore match. Yeah, Big Show and Angle was mainly a, a squash and a comedy match, but I thought it was fun. Benoit and Jericho had a barn burner for the IC title, and that will later be in their just great, great, great matches they will have in the later 2000s, even in 01. 
And, of course, the main event between Rock and Triple H, which should have been the main event for the uh, for Mania 2000. WWE title with Shane McMahon as special guest ref. The pop that Austin got was is one of the most goosebump-inducing pops I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, Austin looked bad and out of shape, but he just got done having surgery not too long ago. And Austin helping The Rock. And JR's line... The Rock went through hell and high water with Stone Cold. Is one of the best JR lines I have ever heard in my life. The Rock winning was such a feel-good moment. Absolutely amazing. Fantastic pay-per-view. My favorite Backlash pay-per-view. What do you guys think about Backlash? Do you think this year is going to be good? Probably not, but hey, we can't all be winners. Anyway, with that being said, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. What is your favorite and your least favorite WWE Backlash pay-per-view? Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Join the herd. I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace out.